<laughs> Welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast, where we look to empower and encourage real conversation amongst men everywhere by unpacking topics on self-help, philosophy, and business. Hey guys, it's Matt Hannum here, and as promised, this is part two of a two-part series where we did a live podcast with a live audience. Well, and we always do a live podcast, but we did a live audience-based podcast and then broke it out into some, some, into some Q&A and a workshop. So please, this is the Q&A. If you haven't listened to the previous episode, you might just want to go check that out too, but um, there's no harm. The Q&A um, is pretty... It's pretty easy to follow and uh, there's some great uh, questions and participation from our live audience and I think you're going to really enjoy this. So please do, please let us know your questions and we'll look to answer them on future episodes. So without further ado, here is Simple Minds. Don't forget to go back and listen to part one, but this is part two of our live Q&A show. Anybody in the crowd got any questions on what we've talked about today? Do you remember any of it? Yeah, so we've got a bit of time, guys. Um, we've got at least probably 20, 30 minutes. We'd love to um, actually just use this as a part B of the episode. So, um, yeah, please ask us your questions. And uh, we're going to pass a microphone around. It's a little gremlin. It, 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 it's I, a little afro. I, I promise it is a microphone. Tickler. It's got an American <laughs> accent. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so just uh, if you want to just get the attention of Andrew and uh, we'll welcome any Has Andrew any got any questions? questions? Yeah, hanging out. Yep. Do I have questions? I don't know. You're holding the mic, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just the mic right Anybody? Oh, here we go. State your name for uh, us. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, great, great podcast. Uh, look, more a statement than, than a question. I, I think um, one of the things that you've mentioned uh, that LinkedIn and Hack or whatever, sorry, the, uh, those, the, those top 10. Uh, resolutions, notice they're recurring, so they tend to be a, a theme across the board year in, year out. So they're obviously quite important. And um, look, one of the things that I've, I've learned, it took me years, is that uh, oftentimes people make goals and we all say it's a marathon rather than a sprint. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make is that whenever they make the goal and they don't reach it, in reference to what we've been talking, sometimes it's the you know case of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So if you don't reach a goal by a prescribed time, whether you know it's 2020, Look, maybe give yourself a bit of a slack and take it into 2021. Yeah. So you know, so that's that's something because people throw the whole goal. I, I, I think you need to. Past. I think you need to learn um, if you can change any aspect of how you're trying to achieve that, without a doubt. Yeah. Uh, so I think the reviewing, the learning, and the iterating are, are really important. But yeah, I mean, time time is a construct, right? I mean, unless you've got to pay a bill by a certain time, most things have got, got some pliability to it. Absolutely. On that, I think um, just just to add is something I've had to learn over the last few years is is practicing self compassion um, and not being so hard uh, on yourself um, when you don't hit that same metric or goal. Particularly high achievers, um, people who are um, you know setting out to set all of these goals, uh, just learning to be like yeah, being a bit more self compassionate um, when you miss the mark. And, and look, you, you're spot on because I met a lady last week that wanted to lose 45 kilos. That was a goal. She lost 25. Same thing. Uh, that's so, so I said, look, 25 kilos. Congratulations. You know, that is awesome. And so, yeah, so you just got to remind them, look, maybe, you know, the extra weight that could be next year, but, you know, pat on the back for the 25 that you have, you know. So and great. yeah, grateful for what yeah. you've actually done that's as well. That's what I'm saying. Other words, if you're not, yeah. the slide goes back the other way and yeah. she'll put on 20 plus another whatever, Absolutely. because you don't have that back mark of, of, of being grateful for where you're at, where you're starting. One, um, one thing that I would, would add to that is, there, and that's what part of why I built out that document that I talk about that I go through every year is- Did as, you build it or Tash build it? No, I built it. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, it's as, asking. As the boss is in the room, that's all. The boss is in the room. <laughs> we, go, we go through it. Uh, well, as, um, as, as an achiever, and I think often most people will sort of consider themselves achievers, you, you've got a tendency just to reflect um, without the gratitude piece. So ref reflect on the things that didn't work without looking at the things that did. And as part of that document, before I get anywhere near, before we get anywhere near sort of setting any goals, we're looking at not just what we didn't get done, but what we did. And some of those things might've been planned. Some of those things were unplanned, but just literally even writing, writing 2019 down and just saying what went well, what didn't. You'd be amazed at how much comes out in that, in that year. And then you can look to add that in. And, and as is, 
when, when you're an achievement focused kind of person, it's easy to just be down on yourself and then just push yourself harder for another goal. But if you just take it, realize what you've done, some was planned, some wasn't, and you can bring that into the next year and you're completely right. I mean, that's 25 kilos is a huge number to lose, but she just, that, that lady had the, the, the wrong motivation. She was facing the wrong direction around that goal. So she wasn't grateful the fact that she was over halfway to a, not just a one year goal, a, a life changing goal. And, and that's what's so um, sad about that in a, in a way that she was, that was her position. She couldn't find the gratitude um, for what she'd done. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for the question. Hey guys. So um, I, I really liked what you were saying on, um, it's really important to make sure you know what goal you're, you're trying to achieve and to make sure that you're setting your goal in, a, in an appropriate way, not looking at the negative things, but the positive and not setting a million goals at once. So I was gonna ask, um, do you have any advice on prioritizing goals and making sure that you're not trying to work on two things that are counterproductive to the other? Like, um, for example, if someone wanted to put on a lot of muscle, but they also wanna lose weight, but you, you can't do both at the same time. Like, how do you choose what's important? I think what I've learned, and, and by no means am I a health expert here, but um, what I've learned, I work with a naturopath and a PT um, on a month, well, BT on a weekly basis, a naturopath on a monthly basis. Um, I, the, 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 the body is made up of three components. It's water, fat, and muscle. Uh, obviously, bone is, is whatever it is. And those three things do play a different part in different things. So it is possible in, in some ways and some training methodologies and some, in, in some diets to actually get the same things done. So um, it, just, it just really depends on, on knowing the intricacies of what you're trying to achieve. Because on a high level, it might seem like it's impossible, but on a granular level, there's a little step that you take one way early and you can achieve two things at the same time. And I think that's the other part, is that some, some goals that on a high level look conflicting, but when you peel them right back, a, a different step or a different thought can get two of them done within a reasonable time frame. It may not be within 30 days, it might be within 40 days, but they can be done. Um, and I think that's, that's where the people, that's where the greats play the game. The greats play the game to knock over more, more at, uh, at once than one at once. So it's kind of the why versus the what, right? Yeah. I mean, which is the – so I don't know whether you, whether you have a bit more detail to share in that, but they, they sh there probably isn't really a conflict. No. Um, you just haven't put the effort into – which is difficult, but putting the time into really figuring out what it is that you truly want to then put the what's, you it's, know, the it's, goals and it's, behind it's, it. And it's the tracking stuff because I do know my naturopath tracks that, that many points of data on my body um, that – I know, you know what's going on with body inflammation, with muscle, with with water, with fat. I know that stuff, um, and I'm I'm a hundred percent better than where I was, you know, three years ago, where I, where I where I started working with these guys. Um, I'm not great at it. I mean, you know, I I, I drink alcohol and I and I binge eat at different at different <laughs> stages, um, but. I know what Thanks I'm doing. For I, don't, I don't think the question's really around your health, Roger. No, but I've said, but, I, but I, know, I know how it impacts those various facets, I right? Think she was just using it as an example. I think that's yeah. an example. That, yeah, yeah, she was just using an example. So she was just more so using that as an example I'm rather than. Just saying how you, you can also break things down. We're talking I, about how, what, what we're tracking. I think, it, I think um, which was touched on, clown. like what we've talked about, is. I knew it was an example. Is understanding. The, the bigger, yeah, why? Like, what, what is it that you're really trying to, uh, really yeah. trying to achieve um, and genuinely wanting to achieve? Again, on a true purpose, not on a negative moving away because if it's a true, multiple avenues along the way will start to fall in place. We get too focused on the what, which is what some yeah. of what you're explaining, yeah, the rather than now. being and on, on the process, rather than focusing Thanks, on Justin. on the end. You're welcome, um, and sitting in that space a little bit more, and it, having faith that those other things will you start to dirty play F out. Word. I did use the dirty <laughs> F word. Well, yeah, we we set goals that we actually truly don't want as well. We just think that we want them. So it's just reiterating yeah. that point of. So it's like if you've got two conflicting, I don't know, I. My thought is that you try to go one above. What would achieving both of them actually give you? And sitting there for a little bit um, to 
to start with. And then if that doesn't really go, see if you can go another one up. Well, they call, you use the five why process. You go, why, why? And you'll end up getting to the real reason somewhere between fourth what's, and fifth. What's the last line. three why? What's the last three of the process? Why? <laughs> why? <laughs> but I don't know. That, that helps you chunk it down. Okay. And, and the reverse also to chunk up. Does that help? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Was there a specific thing that you were referring to? Or? No, I was just thinking about over planning and maybe um, or, or um, setting too many goals at once. And that's true because sometimes um, if, you, if you're working on them both, one might happen um, consequently yeah. without even trying. Right. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Example. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for allowing Conrad to discuss his naturopathic activities. I love my naturopath. <laughs> If that's even a word, naturopathic, I have no idea. What's up, guys? Um, hey, Rob. Yeah, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> so I can't, I can't differentiate between the, yeah, the beard and the mic. Share some personal thing. And, uh, and I want to ask you guys if you have some experience or why sometimes certain goals just happen overnight and some other you put so much thought, thought on there and they just, it looks like they never happen. For like, for example, in my life, uh, I don't know, I stopped, I quit smoking like uh, one day to the other, I just wake up one day, say I'm not gonna smoke anymore. And I, it never happened again. And I, you know, on, on my 20s, in my, in my 20s. And the same kind of thing happened recently when I just completely changed my diet and it literally happened pretty much overnight and, and other few things. So I have this kind of, um, mentality now that I feel like the more I plan a goal, it almost nev it never happened. Like if it's a ha I feel that it happened, it happened less. And if I don't think about it, I'm, it might will happen overnight, one day. So I'm just wanna, if you have any experience on that and uh, if you have any advice on uh, how to kind of overcome that and- It's your emotion, it's the emotional buy-in straight away. So, so the emotion, the hormones trigger emotions, emotions trigger actions, actions trigger outcomes, okay? So the emotional uh, reason for why you wanted to give up smoking was probably bigger than whatever the emotional reason was for achieving another goal. Okay. That's, that's the only reason something happens quicker than the other. You guys got anything to add to that? No, I mean, you- Do I need to pat it out a bit longer for you? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can you- um, <laughs> Yeah, can you just talk about your naturopath for a few minutes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but no, focus creates reality. You're yeah. truly focused on that goal. Yeah, it's yeah. the motivation as well, right? Yeah. So it's the, the emotions coming in because it's probably more of a negative facing uh, emotion um, that's driving the goal that you're not achieving, whereas it's been proven that you're able to create very quickly a radical change because you're completely bought in to the goal, the reasons why, and then it just became the actions, which became was easy for you and that momentum would have obviously built very quickly. Immediately you said no to cigarette the next day, threw out the packet, you know, whatever you did. When there were situations to have one, you just know, I know why I'm doing it. The other goal, which we don't know what you're talking about specifically, but the other goal is not so simple because you don't have the, the a few things, but it's probably negative in, in your in your reasoning, but also then, so then there's a belief issue and that that sits within it um, and, and it sits all in, in probably emotion. Because um, if you can create like that, there's no reason why you couldn't create similarly for this other goal. Do you think it's also, it's not believing enough in that goal? For, for example, like it can be a simple one, like start um, do some, me, me, some, some meditation, like simple one, reading more, those are two, Goal that yep. I would like to achieve. Why? You know, they're not nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. Why? why? I mean, that, that, and so the why is connected to your the your your, your most um, your most emotive part of your brain. I forgot what it's called. Um, the stuff in the middle. <laughs> Amig amygdala. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> but, but that's you know, it's a question of like, well, why do you want to read more or why do you want to meditate? Um, because if you can figure that part out, um, and it's probably like JB saying, it's, you go up another to level or two. Um, and you and you'll figure the bigger reason, um, and then you'll be able to trigger the action. Cool. Because feeling like you should do something doesn't work, right? It's the mm. same as why everyone's doing the lose weight and oh, so I'll exercise. Like you can lose weight without exercising, but they feel like they should, so then they'll fail at it. So if the meditation piece is because you feel like you just should, which is a negative way of viewing that as a goal, well, because everybody else is doing it, because everyone else is doing it. Whereas if you feel like 
you want to meditate because you feel it will improve your energy and health and and you've got that as a focus and you believe that is worthwhile of your t- like worthwhile use of your time you you'll likely achieve it because if you can quit smoking in a day and if you can change your diet as as I know a bit about you Robert I know you have changed your diet radically within an overnight period and just stuck to that then you could easily meditate every day if you believed it was worthwhile okay yeah that makes sense thanks guys can I just, uh, sorry guys ask a follow-up question to what you guys have been talking about is if you've had experience in cultivating that buy-in in that creating that emotional uh kind of trigger or whatever it is to actually build from there and get that goal that you want or at least loosely want it initially to yeah to, to get that buy-in it's part of my it's part of the work i do um you know, it's part of the, the, the coaching piece I do. It's part of the financial planning piece I do. It's part of the mentoring and, and, um, and the various people I work with on an individual and, and collective basis. Um, yeah, so, and these guys have, have also started doing some of the work using the guy that's been teaching me. So, sorry, so the question is... Do you know how to do it? How do you create that yeah. emotion? Well, how, do you know how to get them, how them to get to that emotional space? Yeah. Yeah. And, and and it's it, and I'll, and I'll, his answer was yep yeah <laughs> the yep. not telling uh, no well, well, well to, to to tell someone how you do it of. is very hard when you don't, can't demonstrate it but yeah. the, the the simplicity of it all and the, and the the essence to getting to where it is and understanding that we as individuals are, are all energy okay if we can appreciate that we're all energetic beings um, energy needs to flow does that make sense. So energy doesn't doesn't flow and it dies. All right, energy doesn't flow; it doesn't exist. So energy has to keep flowing. So in our current state or our current reality uh, versus our vision state, um, our vision state is what we call our positive. We're trying to create that. That's structural. We have to design that. Okay. Our current state is what we've already got. It's what we're blessed with. So we're in our current state. Was in our negative by default, and our vision state's our positive by default. You know, this is yin and yang, night and day, polarity. Energy flows between those two, okay? So without creating a big enough vision, you're actually not flowing, which means you're, you're oscillating in a negative energy, which means that your energy's dying, which is why you're getting tired, which is why you don't get um, the, the impetus or the energy or have the energy to, to do anything you want to do because your vision isn't big enough. All right, now, why you don't move is largely based on your beliefs. Um, and your beliefs are generally given to you lovingly by your mum and dad, your brother and sister, your grandparents, all between the ages of zero, four, zero, eight. I, I think it's, it's an ongoing, it's a process that you have to do very um, consistently um, because it is literally, I think, is, and Rob's example was great and kind of, Matt, what you said, is that the – the emotion to change was stronger than the emotion to stay in the yeah. in the space. And generally we have a lot of beliefs attached through, and I guess the older you get, they, they get probably stronger and stronger to, to, to break. Um, and we get a lot, of, see a lot of scars and other bits and pieces that happen to us over our period of, of life. And so therefore the emotion of the belief is still stronger than the emotion of where you want to go. And it's a process of starting to connect more with that emotion of where you want to go. Um, for me, journaling has been really um, powerful with that and trying to sit in space of um, just visualizing of trying to think about well, what is it you truly want and um, visualizing and trying to, um, you know, you know, I know you feel, you know, you and I, we're, we're creative people. And so being able to visualize creatively what that could look like in your own imagination and um, trying to what that feels like and practicing that, like that's the first, like that's just the training rules. Yeah. There's, a, there's a- Dreaming a bit. It, yeah, dreaming a bit. And, um, but the second part of that, I think is you have to start doing the work on yourself around what is the- the, the beliefs and the baggage and the be, learning on the self-awareness of what could be, what is your anchoring? What's anchoring you back? What's creating the, the, the emotion of the stronger pull backwards ra- and rather than the emotion pull forward. Um, and that is just a, I mean, that's part of the journey of life really to go, you, you know, over up is trying to understand yourself more. Well, and a lot of us don't want to look at inward. that inward because it's scary and we don't want to, 
um, admit our fears. We don't want to ad- admit our faults. We don't want to. It's scary. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's a bit of a process. Um, from if anything, what's helped with me is just starting with um, writing down what you really really want and. And, and writing it in story form has helped for me a lot, actually. It's just like um, you just start to write. Like uh, as an example, it might be like, you know, uh, this is my life. You write it as if you're in the present moment. Like this, you say you project out 10 years from now and you write a bit of a story of what the life is and you're writing as if you're in that moment. And um, that's a really surreal experience. Um, and you just keep writing and just see what flows and there's no right or wrong and you might park that and then just leave it and then you might do it again. Um, so, yeah, that can also be another kind of training wheel process that's helped me, if that helps. Yep. That's good. I've got a question. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> has, has Nicholas got a question? Not often. <laughs> Um, so you talked a that. bit about gratitude and you mentioned that in order to progress, you need to come from a place of gratitude. So this is something I've been working on and have not been very successful. Matt purchased me a journal in, it might have been April. Yeah, it was <laughs> your, for your birthday. Yeah, it was either <laughs> Christmas or April, so April's better, um, where I think I've made one entry and I had a really simple format which was, three things that you're grateful for and it can be really big and it can be really small and I haven't progressed past that one page. So do you have any tips or advice on how you articulate this or how you go through the process of coming from that place of gratitude and then being able to move forward? I reserve the right to not answer this question. (laughs) (laughs) You guys got an answer? You guys aren't brave not to talk to Tash? (laughs) No, they're not. <laughs> there's, a, there's a technique you can use, Tash. I mean, obviously, there's a, there's a process and, and a discipline. Like, discipline creates freedom, right? So if we accept the philosophy that gratitude serves us as giving us the floor to, to grow from and move along um, in the absence of, um, of anything else, then we have to include it, right? So you've got to make time for it. That's the first part. Um, the second part, if, you're not, if you don't know what you're grateful for, um, you've, re- you've really just got to start with what's obvious, Okay, um, and it can be you know you're grateful for your children, grateful for Matt, and and it's a process of starting with what's obvious, and what you'll start to see is yet you'll start dissolving the monster that's not letting you be grateful, um, because what's stopping you from doing it is is a construct of your of your limiting belief patterns, okay, um, and that's why we don't do things because our egos don't want us to really achieve, um, you know it, it tells us that we're safe, it tells us that we're good enough, we stay in our comfort zones. Okay, so we need to get past that. Um, and so the, the uncomfortableness of journaling on a regular basis um, and talking about what's obvious will start to open doors and you'll start to get a wider vision of what else is around you that you're probably missing. Um, and when you can't, and th- th- that's the thing, when you, when you don't know what you're grateful for or when you don't stop and pause to be, uh, or as they say, you don't stop and pause to smell the roses, um, you can't be grateful. And when you can't be grateful, and believe me, I know, um, the fall from that um, is is dramatic. So um, it's worth it, it's it's a, it's a it's a worthwhile practice. There's a great book called Peaks and Valleys. I don't think we've referenced it recently, um, but it's a, it's a story. It's a it's a it's an allegory of a man that's um, that pretty much cu- uh, climbs mountains and goes up and down. And, and he ha- he he the, the the difference between the feeling he gets when he's on top of his peak to what he gets when he's in the bottom of the valley is two very different things. It's, you know, the hustle, the bustle, the chaos, the, the pollution in the valley versus the, 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 the vision and the, the fresh air and the serenity of the, of the peak. And in 90 pages, that book taught me two things. You, to stay on your peak longer, you need to be grateful and you need to show humility. And they're the only two things I focus on practicing regularly every day. And in the absence of knowing where I'm going, those two things stop me from falling. I think Hado has a great. Um, he has a, he's got a great shirt on. He has a great, great shirt on. But um, <laughs> is that a shirt? I know. <laughs> I think get that. We've, talk, we've talked about gratitude, but in terms of the journaling um, element, 
it comes back to kind of what we've talked about. And it's like not being hard on yourself and setting it as like a should. Um, and, you know, I've been journaling on and off the last couple of years and um, I write three things I'm, I'm grateful for every day. And I've, I've missed only the odd day here or there for the last few years, but there's a, a deeper reason. But to start off with the habit, like mm. I would go like three days and then not go for four days and then I'd go like a whole two weeks and I'd stop a week and then I'd just kind of like just pick it up. And now I do it, yeah, for probably the last yeah, 18 months, almost every day with the odd day missed here or there. And I don't beat myself up if I miss a day, but it's just a practice. And I think like from previous podcasts, we've talked about gratitude. Hey, I, I really love how you practice gratitude. Do you want to share kind of your, your way of practicing gratitude? How can I tree naked? Other than that, <laughs> can you uh, revisit? No, I'm joking. Um, I don't know. There's, there's a few ways. I struggle to journal too. Like, I'm, it's something that I am still in the phase of Justin. I do it for a little while and then I'll stop and I'll do it for a little while. So, I, uh, yeah, very much so. But uh, on an extreme level, uh, like, I imagine if my partner or father or something dies, <laughs> you know, and I know that's very extreme, but. Um, yeah, it really set, resets you back and, and makes you appreciate every little thing um, and sort of visualise that and go through it and like, well, what, what do I, um, what, if that person like passed away today, um, would I be okay with the way I, the way I acted, the what I've said, you know, how I've treated them? If that's a no, uh, then I, I go and change it. Um, I don't do it all the time now, but I, st- I still do it every now and then. Um, just to give me a bit of a reset. Um, but yeah, that's a bit of extreme. I know Gary V does that a little bit. Yeah. I've heard him speak about it. And I, was, I was more referencing where you've shared like the more micro gratitude moments where, you know, you're oh. dri- driving down in your car. <laughs> oh, sorry. You know, with the wind blowing sorry. through sorry. in your micro, with the wind blowing through your yeah, hair. Yeah. I thought we were going um, like oh, extreme. Go either sorry. way. But he wants to kill people, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was referencing how yeah. you've shared how you, you practice gratitude yeah. throughout the day, oh, okay. here um, and there in those moments. And I think that's really powerful for yeah for people all right okay thank you so to go to go down to a next next scale level not um <laughs> doom and gloom um <laughs> thinking about people dying. <laughs> yeah i know but um sorry you got me all i'm drunk no um <laughs> i try to live in the moment as much as i can so little things like taking my shoes off walking on the grass and it, really enjoying the fact that I'm on grass. You know, I was actually in Sydney earlier on this week and I was driving around and there was like no parks anywhere. It was doing my head, you know, where I was driving anyway. It was doing my head in. So, um, you know, leaving the gym in the morning, I always put the window down, even if it's in the heart of winter and I try to, you know, let the wind go on my face. So it's just living in those like particular moments. You know, every time I get home from work or something, um, even though I've got a little boy now, I'll give him a hug, but I'll make sure I'll give my wife Ashby a hug and we kiss and we and share and embrace and use that moment to really enjoy it and, and show that gratitude. So not so much as like I'm not a big journaler, but I try to do it in micro you know, events throughout the day as well. Um, and th- that works for me and it really resets me throughout the day. And by the end of the day, you know, like I'm, I'm energetic, and I'm happy and that sort of stuff. And that's, that's one thing I've done. Does that satisfy your... Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Thanks, man. <laughs> no, I think that's really helpful, you know, yeah. like, uh, yeah, to, to practice gratitude, you know, and like even, you know, you pick about it with mindfulness, you stop at a red light and it's like being grateful for that rather than, you know, being frustrated. Um, yeah. It's those, just meditate it's, now. Yeah, it's the micro moments that I think are really powerful because when I, when I get, um, when you get frustrated with someone, like someone cuts you off, you know, and then that compounds and then that compounds and someone else does something and by the end of the day, you, you're so pissed off and I'll still do it. Like sometimes I'll come home, I'll, I'll be physically angry um, and I know that I haven't been doing like great gratitude moments throughout the day because, you know, some idiot cut me off. So and it's it, about him dying and yeah. then he's grateful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good. So, yeah, that's the, that's the tool that I do anyway. So it's a little bit different from these guys, but, yeah, that, that seems to work for me anyway. Sometimes. Um, we good? We got... Oh, 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 here we go. Fun's eye. Hey, guys. <laughs> well, this has been great. Thanks. Um, Thanks for coming. No, no. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so I'm 
I get it about the emotion driving our, our, our goals and that's why we achieve them. So I have something that I've been doing uh, for the last 18 months or so. I've been going to the gym. I've engaged a PT. I've got a homeopath and not a naturopath, Conrad. Cool. So we can, we can chat more yeah. about the, we can battle. the natural uh, <laughs> no, I'm cool with that. part later. Um, I hate going. Uh, the, the PT I'm with knows, you. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. The PT knows that I, that I don't like going. Um, but I do it because I know that it's good for me to go. Uh, I hate ex all forms of exercise. Exercise will kill you. I don't want to take the risk. However, I know it's a, it's a good thing for me to do because it will get me healthy. It will keep me alive for longer. And, you know, so it, it's a habit, I guess, that I'm trying to uh, build, you know, because it, it's good. Do you know what? It's good for my health because I've got other issues and, and, and things like that. Um, so I haven't gone to a point where I wake up at six o'clock in the morning and go, Whew, yes, let's go to the gym. I, I, I don't have that. And I've actually told him that when I get to that point, it's probably time for me to stop because- Yeah, because then you're comfortable again. It, exactly, you know, so, so you know how we're talking about the negative emotions, you know? So I feel like my negative emotion is actually keeping me going. You know, almost, in, you know, like it's almost the opposite where I, I, I hate it so much that I've, I've got to go because I know what it felt like before. Because I do see the results and I'm like, oh, OK, this is this is great. You, you might actually, you might hate going. Love going. You might hate going. But mm -hmm. the actual reason you're doing it is yes. for a positive reason. Yeah. So it's, it's a habit, right? It's like eating my vegetables. Sometimes yeah. you don't like eating your vegetables, but yeah. you, you have to. So I guess what I was trying to get at was sometimes you have to do things because it's, you know, you have to create a habit of doing the right, the right thing, Yeah. you know, to just keep doing it so that, you know, you get stronger, you build that muscle and, and you just keep going rather than just leaning on that emotion. Because if I leant on my emotion, I would have quit a very long time ago. I wouldn't. Yeah, I, th I think there's 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 a few things you say in that, and I it, it, and I don't really want. I'll, I'll really want to talk to you about it separately, because there's a couple of things that you said that I, I I'd want to be a bit more specific with you, but um, I, I I don't necessarily agree 100 percent with what you're saying, um, but I understand what you're saying. So it's it's really it's uh, the other part we talk about a lot is how we use how we use language, right? Um, and language is what we hear and, and what we hear is how we learn and what we learn is what we act. Um, so it's important to understand how we use language in how we frame things. Um, so, yeah. I think that, thanks for sharing, um, Fadzai, that experience. I think that's a, just a, a great reminder of like, like what we've been talking about from my experience is that it doesn't discount that shit is hard and tough and you're not going to enjoy a lot of it. It's not the. It's not what I think the negative and and positive visioning. It's not that it's going to be blissful and rainbows and like you're going to be loving it. I, I I think it's more about when the 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 feeling. Again, what we just talked about. If we're just on the premise that emotion creates action, right? Um, the the emotion to move towards a positive is stronger than to move towards a negative create so if, again just on that premise there's there's an, an outcome of action so if the feeling of like i the bed's more comfy and the action is stay in bed versus well if i go to the gym not the gym itself cuz yeah no one who you know some people do but not very many but it's the bigger piece which you're actually connected with is the it's deciding the deciding factor between the taking the action and so therefore the the overriding action yeah to go is stronger than staying in bed um and i think that's the missing link which we haven't really talked about which we might talk about um this afternoon you still got to do a lot of hard work to get to where you want to go and it's not i think that's a there's a big misconception around being positive and positivity um, in, and even the law of attraction is you can't just sit there in that pleasant, blissful state and then just expect it to happen. Um, and it was just a good reminder, I think, of, yeah, it's, it's shit. Well, the why, the why will help you. Yes. Not stay in bed, whereas the, the negative... There was a, there's, a bigger the negative reason why, there's a bigger reason why Fudge is going to the gym. Yeah, so whereas the negative why, you would still be in bed, which is probably what happened before you started going to the gym until you turned it to a, a positive-framed, 
health goal. If you don't like going to the gym, it still sucks. But you're able to do the action. Yeah, because it's feeding the outcome. The outcome is obviously talking to your health outcome, not the activity of going to the gym. Um, but then I guess one thing that you could practice, and I think it's just a practice, I love, we've talked about this quite a bit, is, you know, uh, change the way you look at things, the things you look at change, and being careful of the language because eventually – um, if you keep using the language where your focus goes, it, the gym will just become harder and harder uh, again. So again, trying to reframe it a little bit and practice it. It's a practice, right? All of this stuff is, is just a practice. It's a process. Um, uh, can go a long way. Um, yeah, changing the way you look at things can really change, um, you know, what they look like. Wrap up. Conrad, um, I actually really like this beer. Yeah, no, so did I. So based on my beer consumption, he, he might sell another litre a year of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let Mark know. But uh, so oh, and West Leaderville, I'll definitely check it out. But actually, you're right. Like as far as a raspberry or one of, like a flavoured beer, I, it actually tastes like it and it actually tastes okay. Mm. Whereas a lot of them are, yeah, I can sense the chemical attempt at putting some flavour in, but these are pretty good. So Terraforma. It has transcendence in the uh, oh, wow. definition. Transcendence. We've, nice. got a, we've got a few yeah. for everyone to try. He's a mate of mine. This. Take it home. Have it, have it later when it's a reasonable hour. <laughs> 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 All right, let's wrap this up. It's been great. Thanks, guys. Um, I really appreciated um, having an open conversation. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, we'll, um, we'll shut it down and... See you next time. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thank you See all. You later, bye. Champagne. Bye. Thanks so much for listening, guys. And that's that wraps up our two-part series from our live Q&A podcast and work goal-setting workshop that we held over in Perth, uh, where, where we're based. So if you enjoyed that, I hope you're there next time we do something similar. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, please like, share with a friend, and uh, we'll see you on the socials. Cheers. Cheers.